So if you're not here for web services, you should be upstairs. If you're here for web services, you're in the right place, at least as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so web services is a new software architecture, and that should mean, should's in bold, so that means pay attention, that should mean that we need a new security architecture. We shouldn't take the same old security architecture we had for other kinds of applications and roll it out for web services. Quick note on myself, I'm from Arctech Group. We're a boutique, very boutique, a consulting provider based in Minnesota. We work all over the globe. Um, also the leader of the OWASP XML security gateway evaluation criteria project, which you might find interesting if you're interested in web services. And I have a blog at One Raindrop that you can sort of follow what I'm, whatever I'm working on. So before we dive into the top 10, um, I'm sort of uh, the why guy. So why are we writing web services at all? And there's a lot of uh, tremendous amount of FUD and vendor hype around web services. So I'm going to loosely define web services as a set of technologies that deliver three things. They deliver virtualization. So we want Bangalore, Beijing, Boston all to be connected. We want to be able to chop up work and deliver it from where it makes sense. We want interoperability. So we want our .NET stuff to talk to our Java stuff. We want our PeopleSoft stuff to talk to our Siebel stuff. We want our SAP stuff to talk to the web. We want all of these things to talk to each other. And then finally, we want reusability. So we've been in all embedded in companies where you know, there's acquisitions made, there's consolidation, there's decentralization, there's all these different things going on. Um, and all the different systems have different definitions of users, different definitions of price, different definitions of order. Uh, so we'd like to get you know, sent more centralized claim systems, pricing systems, order management systems, and so on. So those are the three main goals of why we're writing these things in the first place. What do we mean when we say technically? What do we mean when we say a service? Uh, without getting into SOAP versus REST or any of these other uh, kind of technologies that are out there, we're really talking about a service that separates the interface from the implementation, which is something that we learned from object-oriented programming. So we want the interface, get customer, get order, to be separate from the implementation, the business logic code, the data access code that actually fulfills the request. Secondly, there's a separation between the service and the message document. And so the service requester could be implemented again in C Sharp and .NET. The service provider could be implemented in Java. And the unifying integration point is the message document. So it's not a binary integration, it's a message document based integration. Now when all this stuff came along, uh, the, the first design principle of SOAP uh, six, seven years ago now, maybe nine years ago, was that SOAP was a firewall friendly protocol. The security guys figured out that developers were putting holes through the firewall and accessing backend data. They didn't like that. They started turning off the ports on the firewall. So of course the developers are pretty smart, so they just took their little ant farm route around the firewall and came up with a protocol that could go right through it, port 80, port 443, uh, which was SOAP. Uh, Bruce Schneier's quote at the time was calling SOAP a firewall friendly protocol is like having a skull friendly bullet, which is a good line and uh, you know why he's on the cover of all the magazines. <coughs> but how helpful is that really? Um, we have learned over the years that people make common recurring mistakes. Uh, this isn't the OWASP top 10, but I, this, I'd call this the old school version of the OWASP top 10. Uh, this was uh, James Gosling, Bill Joy, uh, and Peter Deutsch at Sun Microsystems back in the early 90s talking about the eight fallacies of distributed computing. So before there was an OWASP top 10, people were building distributed systems based on Unix and other systems, and they made mistakes, surprisingly. Uh, and so these were eight common mistakes that, that people make, things that you assume are true when you're building out a distributed system, and then later, usually when it's in production, you find out that these things are not true. You assume the network's reliable, you assume there's no latency, you assume you have infinite bandwidth. For our purposes here today, we care about number four. We assume the network is secure. And that obviously has turned out not to be true. So when web services came along, we had our firewall uh, friendly protocol. Um, and that sort of broke the security architecture we use. Uh, the security architecture that most people use looks like this. You, you have a bunch of good stuff called SAP and Siebel and mainframe. Uh, you connect it to the web 
by a three-tier design with a presentation layer, a business logic layer, and a data access layer. And we know the internet's bad, right? It's, we've heard about attacks here for the last day and a half. We know all the different attacks that happen on the internet. We know there's bad stuff out there. So being good security guys, we want to separate our good stuff from the bad stuff. And the tool we've used to do that is, is Visio. Um, we've used a Visio tool that stands I mean, that, that's the one I recommend because it has both the wall and the flames. So you're gonna, you're gonna, an attacker tries to get through that, they're gonna run into the brick wall, fall over, and then burn to death. I mean, that, there's no way you can get through that. It's literally impossible. Problem is it only exists on Visio. And the problem is there's not a clean separation of good stuff and bad stuff. The world actually looks like this. And so that's led to some interesting side effects. So there's a, project done by some folks at McAfee. Uh, you can go and uh, buy user name and password combinations for various banks. Um, so depending on the balance, you pay about 8% of the total uh, bank balance uh, to buy the username and password credentials. So if you have a Washington Mutual account with $14,400, could buy your username and password for $600. MBNA account with $22,000, I could buy your username and password for $1,500. This is the part I love about this report, though, and the link there is on the bottom. What I love about this report is these guys have a money-back guarantee. So it's like Walmart or Sam's Club. Like, if it doesn't work, well, we'll, we'll give you another one. It's like real capitalist economy. <coughs> E-Trade, uh, they actually will reimburse their customers for identity theft. So 2006, this was a 10Q filing to the SEC, the whole nine yards. Um, so they paid back $18 million of losses, uh, 10 million of which were identity theft related. My guess is that that would be, uh, they, they were probably more than that, those are just the ones they agreed to pay back. Those are starting to be some big numbers. So, so I, I would actually blame all of this stuff on the, the good stuff versus bad stuff, Visio firewall architecture actually. So how are we gonna stop all of this going forward? Well, we're all know, we all know confidentiality, integrity, and availability, right? That's, that's what we've been, trained to do and that's how we stop all of our attacks. Absolutely not. Worst possible thing you can do is try to design a system using confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Reason why? Information security is an oxymoron for the 21st century, just like military intelligence and jumbo shrimp. Information security assumes that we can reconcile information on the left-hand side of that slide that's inherently messy, fractal-like, and unpredictable with this illusion of a, a veneer of security over the top. And obviously that can't happen in the real world. So in the real world, in the middle, we have this debate. And really the question is, is this debate gonna be a constructive debate or a destructive debate? And that's really the fundamental question. So confidentiality, integrity, and availability isn't gonna work, hasn't worked, and continue, I would assume it will not continue not to work. So I'm actually going to say that we as information security professionals should be learning and I, feel free to call me a heretic, I'll step back in case the lightning bolt hits. But I'm gonna say it anyway, we should actually be lear learning from software developers, especially people building services. So when we build security services, we wanna build things that, security services that have virtualization, interoperability, and reusability. 